Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition's top stories. The Sir Arthur Lewis Community College is preparing to offer the Bachelor of Science in Nursing program. The music education component of St. Lucia Jazz gets underway. The NCPC explores the link between productivity and punctuality. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Aquayon. The Department of Health Sciences at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College is working towards the introduction of new programs including the Bachelor of Science in Nursing. The college has entered the final process in preparation for the delivery of this new degree pending approval from the General Nursing Council of St. Lucia. During the next six to eight months, the department will ensure that all requirements are met towards the first intake of students. A main component is a building to house the new students. The Department of Health Sciences was charged with the responsibility of upgrading from an associate degree to a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Developing the curriculum was an important step, but having the facility in which to execute it was just as important. Over the past three years, the department has been housed in different locations, the George Charles Secondary School, the main Sir Arthur Lewis Community College building, and now a new home at what was once the Camdu building. For the Vice Principal of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, this represents the college's commitment to not only providing a home for the department, but offering the best quality of instruction for its students. The dedicated space, the lab space is necessary, are necessary for not just cognitive learning, but the honing of technical skills, which is necessary in the nursing profession. We are grateful to the Ministry of Education, for allowing the college the use of this building to add to our growing number of offerings as we continue to meet our mandate of providing quality education for the St. Lucian public. We thank the ministry for its continued support in realizing our objectives as a tertiary institution. According to the Education Minister, the Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, the college has been on a path of evolution and transformation for years. The commissioning of this building, she says, represents the dedication of not only the faculty of the department, but the Board of Governors. But I must applaud the Board for recognizing that still more had to be done and had to be done with greater urgency. And that is why my colleagues at the Ministry and other stakeholders agreed that perhaps it would make good sense to afford you the opportunity to use what was previously known as the Camdu building. And Madam VP was unequivocal in ensuring that we would not host this ceremony until such time as the board would have approved all of the money necessary to secure the equipment as well. The Board of Governors at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College stands behind the college in offering this new level of qualification. The college is cognizant of the importance of ensuring that you have a conducive environment to provide the tuition and the um, training of our nurses to ensure that that conducive environment uh, results in ensuring that the students uh, get the best tuition possible and that it results in um, good performance of the students. The coordinator of the Department of Health Sciences says the commissioning of the building marks the beginning of a series of activities at achieving guidelines and standards set by CARICOM for nurse education. The Pan American Health Organization PAHO director, Dr. Carissa Etienne, recently paid an official visit to St. Lucia. As we hear from Fennel Neptune, a number of important issues were discussed at a meeting with health officials. PAHO Director Dr. Carissa Etienne during her visit to St. Lucia got the opportunity to meet with health and other high-level officials to discuss ways of strengthening PAHO's technical cooperation in the areas of environmental health and universal health care, to name a few. Dr. Etienne says she is committed to working with St. Lucia to provide assistance aimed at improving the health and quality of life for citizens. Certainly going forward, I would like to have sector to ensure much more prevention and promotion, particularly for the chronic diseases and non-communicable diseases, um, because this is the only way to reduce costs, this is the only way to save lives. 
and um, so I'd like to see that. As well, your government is contemplating a significant reform in, in health and, and more so in terms of financing, but strengthening the first level of care as well. And, and so I, I'd like to see that because uh, one of our major goals is ensuring um, access to health for all. As part of the visit, a sub-regional manager's meeting was held with the various member states in the Caribbean. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac was present and highlighted the strides being made in the health sector. She says her government is extremely grateful for the technical support PAO has provided. One of the fundamental ways that PAO has been helping St. Lucia over the years is through financial support of the Department of Health and Wellness work program. They have provided and continue to provide support in the following areas health system and services development, family and community care, disease prevention and control, addressing communicable and non-communicable diseases, healthy lifestyles and social environment, environmental health and disaster, as well as health promotion and social communication. Dr. Carissa Etienne was also granted the great pleasure of meeting the Governor General of St. Lucia, His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. Students who are excited about music are being given opportunities this week to benefit from world-renowned jazz musicians via the Jazz at Lincoln Center. The St. Lucia Jazz Music Education Program kicked off Wednesday with saxophonist Etienne Charles. Over 50 primary, secondary and tertiary students from across the island were in attendance. The music education component of the Jazz Festival was made possible through the collaboration between Events Company of St. Lucia Inc., the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, and Jazz at Lincoln Center. Students and teachers were delighted to interact with world-class jazz musicians. This was a really great initiative where the students learned basically more about the origin of jazz in the Caribbean which we barely touch on at school. Basically, we don't really pursue jazz that much at school. This was really awesome. Oh, it was really cool. It was unexpected. I thought it would be very dry. It was great. I thought that the, the, the energy was very high in the room. I thought the students, well, some of them were a little reserved, and which is very normal for students, that, especially like young teenagers. And it was like, um, but the energy with respect to when the music was happening was clear. And I could tell that they're actually into the music and music was kind of kind of the, the filter that allowed us to communicate. The students today, they really enjoyed the program, the feedback I got from them. And after today, they'll be going home to an assignment for me where they have to give me a brief description of the overall presentation here today. I always thought jazz was very cool. I like jazz music. And so for me as a performer and as, as a clinician, I had to think about, okay, let's make sure that we have enough energy in the room. So I got them up clapping, got them up singing, because I know that they otherwise they're just sitting there. So teach them about the music, because you never know who is in this room. St. Lucia Jazz Festival bringing in these artists to reach out to the, to the kids. It's very important that they broaden their, their scope in terms of what they listen to and even understand what they listen to now, how it came about. And I think this workshop fused these ideas very well and I'm excited to see what's going to happen tomorrow and the following days. So getting them out, just out of school, into different artistic spaces is very, very important. So for making sure that these experiences happen as well as the show. Still with the jazz notes, Wednesday evening, it was all about the pearl for the jazz cruise. Here's Anisia Antoine. The one-of-a-kind collaboration between the St. Lucia Jazz Festival and New York's premier jazz organization, Jazz at Lincoln Center, brought a new addition to St. Lucia's annual jazz festival. 
Jazz on the Pearl featured performances by world-renowned artists such as Russell Hall and Rob Zion Finesse, who serenaded patrons in an intimate boat setting. Miniva Ross, public relations officer at events company St. Lucia, spoke on the rationale behind this year's venue selection. So the idea behind St. Lucia Jazz this year, of course, as you may be well aware, we have been shifting toward a more bona fide jazz festival in that we're focusing more on the genre jazz and jazz in itself is a very intimate it creates a bit it, it calls for very intimate settings smaller venues because it's a niche market um, and so to go mass market with it obviously you probably would be shooting yourself in the foot so it was critical for us to find venues that would cater to smaller groupings and audiences and as well it, it does hit the bottom line because it is more cost effective for us doing Doing it this way. Ross expressed her satisfaction with the numbers in attendance at the event. The audience is a beautiful audience and when I say so it's inclusive but exclusive at the same time. Inclusive in the sense that I see people of all creeds, all races, all types and, and that is beautiful because that's exactly what music does and especially jazz music. Um, and also it's exclusive because we get to ride away into the sunset. Well. The sun has gone down now, but we get to ride away and have a, our own party on the pool. The well-known St. Lucian duo Rob Zay and Finesse have been performing at St. Lucia Jazz from 2017. The artists expressed their gratitude to the organizers for giving them the opportunity to be a part of the festival. You know, when we do events like this, it's always more of a special playlist. I mean, if it's songs that, we, we, that we've known for some time, we try to do them in a different way, a different style. And, um, you know, a, a, apart from showing the musicality of what we're about, whether it's a, a, our vocal ranges or our instruments, um, you know, it, I think it's important to, to put on a show. We're here to perform. We're here to perform and entertain, you know, entertain the, the people. Uh, and that's what um, I think we do best and that's what we enjoy to do. That's what's fun. That's what's fun. <laughs> Jazz on the Pool took place on Wednesday 9th of May 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Imagine being away from home, surrounded by danger and hostility, unable to escape or speak the language, and being exploited. It might sound like fiction, but for 40 million victims of human trafficking worldwide, it is a reality. Innocent people enticed by the promise of a new life, then enslaved into forced labor or sex trafficking. Human trafficking happens in plain sight. Know the signs, see it, report it. To report suspected cases of human trafficking, call the TIP hotline at 847. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport. Thanks, Michelle. First off, on your segment focusing on youth development and sports, under-15 schools cricket all but ready to bowl off with the first round of matches in the 2019 competition set for Wednesday, May 15th. Participants must be 15 years of age as of September 1st, 2019. Matches will be of 40 overs duration. Teams are not allowed to declare their innings close. Four points are being allocated for a win two for a tie, one for no results, and no points for a loss. Teams have been separated into four groups. Group A comprises Chazelle Secondary, Sufre Comprehensive, PI Secondary, VFO Comprehensive, and Beanfield Comprehensive. Group B consists Clendon Mason Memorial, Miku Secondary, Archipo Secondary, Granivia Secondary. In Group C are Castries Comprehensive, Grosely Secondary, Sir Ira Simmons Secondary, and Vilbutai Secondary. Group D, St. Mary's College, Babano Secondary, Leon Hess Comprehensive, and Cicero Secondary. In the opening round fixtures, Group A, Chazelle Secondary takes on Sufre Comprehensive at the PI Playing Field. Group B, Clendon Mason Memorial comes up against Miku at Larisus. Group C, Castries Comprehensive will play Grosely at Grosely and in Group D, St. Mary's College tackles Babano at the Mindo Phillip Park. The Northern Zone Inter-District Primary Schools Football Competition 
was held at the Sam Plain Field Wednesday. School Sports Coordinator Isabel Alexander Markey expressed the hope that this competition will continue to develop the sport among schools on the island. That is the plan. Um, it is the initiative of, of the Football Association. However, as you and everybody else would have known, the ministry with the Football Association did start female football in the secondary schools. Um, we started with the seven aside, but then we had to stop for a while because of some misunderstanding we had with the whole competition. But then with the onset of the primary school football, female competition, we were looking to foster that, that, that bridge between primary school and secondary school and to continue a more sustainable female football program. Meanwhile, President of the St. Lucia Football Association, Lyndon Cooper, who was also on hand at the Saab playing field, noted how important this competition was to his association's objective of developing women's football. It's basically part of the overall development plan. It will be just so that we should invest more in the prime school, both boys and girls. A few months ago, we had the boys now. It's the, the, the girls and we have already committed ourselves to having this in initiative for the next four years. It's part of trying to encourage the kids to play more. The Inter-District Primary School's female football competition is a collaborative effort by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, the Ministry of Education and the St. Lucia Football Association. The action moves to the Philip Marsley Ground Friday with competition among districts 5 to 8. FINA open water swim instructor Stephen Cassidy is hopeful that in the long run, all children of school age in St. Lucia will be exposed to the pleasures of open water swimming. Cassidy is currently on island conducting a FINA level 1 open water swim course on behalf of the St. Lucia Aquatics Federation and also involves a number of physical education and sports teachers. It's fantastic that, that I was invited to be a part of this and it's forward thinking by the ministry and by the people involved in physical education here in St. Lucia. Imagine if every student in the island one day had exposure to the water and that they learned that it's not something to fear but something to love and something to be a part of. And that's the goal for the future. Tariq Edward is a physical education and sports teacher at the Cicero Secondary School. He feels the course will help his students get better prepared for school championships. It's a new, a new venture, so they're very much excited. Um, some of them are still fearful of the water, but um, with practice, eventually, we should be able to compete at the Inter-Secondary School Swim Championship soon. The open water swim course ends on Friday. That's your update on youth development and sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Staff at the WLBL received a lesson on the link between productivity and punctuality by members of the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council during their safety awareness activities. More in this report from Glenn Simon. A safe staff is a more productive staff. Rings true as the Winward and Leeward Bury WLBL observed a safety day for its staff at its Viewfort office. Safety is a major component of the operations of the Bury whose safety vision is zero accidents. Among the presenters for the day was Fiona Hingson, Director of the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC. She noted that one of the mandates of the NCPC is to raise awareness around the issues involving productivity and competitiveness. So we discussed what productivity is all about, why it's important for a company like WLBL to improve on the productivity and how that impacts on the overall productivity for the country. When all companies improve on the productivity, St. Lucia benefits on the whole. So um, today we also discuss two factors that um, in hinders productivity, absenteeism and punctuality. So we believe that improving on absenteeism and punctuality can really help the company um, with the bottom line because they are spending money, paying salaries and so on. And if, if employees are not at work, then it reduces the output and therefore the productivity. Human Resource Officer at WLBL, Margarita Aurelia, said the thinking behind inviting the NCPC to the Safety Day activity 
is because the company has recognized the important collaboration between safety and productivity, as a productive worker also works safely. I think it was well received. The, the staff now have a, a better understanding of productivity and not just productivity for the organization, but for themselves too, because um, we both tend to benefit when the organization um, is more productive and the employees are more productive, you get a better output. So in the end, it's a win-win for the employee and the organization. With a 24-hour production cycle, safety is a high priority for WLBL, who prominently displays the number of accident-free days during their operations. Production supervisor at WLBL, Aurea saint -Hilaire, said he found the presentation very insightful, not just for companies like WLBL, but for the nation at large, as productivity helps the nation move. Well, productivity goes hand in hand with a program that we already have at WLBL, which is TPM, Total Productive Maintenance, man Management, sorry. And it, it, it's really about minimizing waste and also to, um, to look at how you can, you can impact on profit and, and other areas in the company. The NCPC aims to foster increased collaboration with the private and public sectors, institutions and organizations, as well as the wider public, on issues surrounding productivity and competitiveness. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquio. I have my mobile, landline, cable TV, and internet service. If I have a problem with any of the services, what should I do? Here's what you should do to resolve the problem. First, get and fill out a complaint form and lodge your complaint with the service provider. If after 30 days there is still no solution, you may contact your National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission, NTRC. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC, and this station. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayon. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information, uh, Gouvernement CTC, GIS, Assembly uh, Television National NTN, Capuzato Nouvelle Aquayon, President of Primus Hutchinson. CTC, c'est un parmi plusieurs pays à la terre qui j'ai signé un agrément pour le commitment pour continuer à soutenir le développement. Plan, c'est pour placer attention à ce peuple-là, planète. Prospérité, la paix et pour former le gymnage. Agrément Salah, qui a une cause CPA pour prêter responsabilité pour implémenter Agrément Salah. Organisation Nations Unies a déjà développé ces règles-là qui ont été bâillées sur le port pour aider en façon pour implémenter ces Agrément Salah à la façon de développement national. C'est aussi comment c'est ni engagement et puis système Salah qui les Nations Unies a développé depuis l'année 2016. Selon le secrétaire permanent en département de développement économique, Claudia Simanuel, cette ci déjà a participé dans le programme SALA, ça c'est le programme de soutenir le développement pour juste l'année 2020. M. Emmanuel a déclaré que cette ci a établi un plan national de développement côté gouvernement, ni plan pour délivrer six initiatives durant la période 1919 pour 2021, et qui aussi la sécurité, les citoyens, la construction et le programme de bâtiment, l'agriculture, Éducation, affaires touristiques, exacté, affinissement, engagement, ça là, la jeune espoir qui y a un plan de développement qui a place et qui a une solution de développement finance pour ça capable d'établir un plan de en place pour le programme ça là. Ministre de l'Éducation, j'ai annoncé que le programme pour éprouver à sous qualité projet d'éducation, j'ai commencé. Le programme ça là, qui a suivi la vision du gouvernement, c'est ici pour augmenter le secteur de l'éducation en cette ci avec ces banques de développement à qui ont été financées. Ça a venu dans un web de l'éducation qui a adressé ces diverses nécessités, les enfants, les jeunesses et les adultes aussi. Le programme a développé des jeunes gens qui finissent les études à l'université et qui sont bien capables de prendre place dans la commune économique internationale et la commune sociale. Il y a un programme qui a fait 
c'est pour renforcer la capa capacité et qui aussi a improuvé des degrés qualité de l'instituteur à l'école pour faire l'éducation plus important et pour faire des degrés d'instruction en plus valeur en secteur éducation. Le programme a aussi adressé côté l'année brisée éducation spéciale pour cet étudiant qui n'est pas bien normal. Alors, il y a un programme d'étrainement spécial pour les instituteurs. Alors, mais ce programme a un programme d'études à degré de master's à l'Université de New Brunswick. Selon le ministre de l'Éducation, on a Dr. Gail Rigobert, la journée de considération côté cette école secondaire qui a été transformée pour Forme 6. Selon on a Dr. Rigobert, le gouvernement s'est si déjà trouvé assistance finance de la développement de la en valeur de 16 millions, 16 millions, 182 000 dollars pour implémenter le projet salaire. Autorité des affaires touristiques, le ministre des affaires touristiques, il veut investir dans cette loge avec la SPA. J'ai ensemble pour faire assurer les produits des affaires touristiques puis il a continué à faire progrès. C'est pour ces organisations là j'ai collaboré ensemble pour renforcer la capacité de ces travailleurs qui sont les premiers à parmi les travailleurs en business touristique qui ont un engagement et puis les, les étrangers qui ont visité le pays. Étonnement, il pour un coup à chambre de conférence à l'hôtel Begans le 7 pour le 8 à mois de mai. Côté à peu près 300 en ces travailleurs à la participer. Le ministre de la responsabilité pour affaires touristiques, à cette ci on a Dominique Fede, remarqué que la bonne qualité de service est toujours très important pour les produits touristiques. M. Fede a vu qu'après ces travailleurs à la fin, il y a il y a aussi un certificat pour montrer qu'il est bien qualifié pour conduire le travail en profession. Et c'est comme ça notre bout de nouvelle là. Je vous remercie pour votre temps pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour votre prochaine et moi encore. Si vous avez la vie, vous avez pris cette nouvelle à quoi vous avez pris. Nous vous remercions et puis nous vous remercions. Merci en pile, Primus. Et ici, regardez ce qui est passé à nous, weather-wise. The Atlantic High Pressure System will maintain a moderate to brisk easterly wind flow across the Eastern Caribbean region during the forecast period. Low-level clouds drifting along this wind flow will bring a few scattered showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 1.21 p.m. and will be high again at 8.18 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was low at 2.48 p.m. and will be high at 9.25 p.m. The seas moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.38 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.